Welcome to another edition of the Faith Builders broadcast. I am Pastor Philip Steele, and I'm so glad that you have joined us this edition of our broadcast. I'm so uh, blessed, excited, uh, expectant. I am uh, so uh, just overwhelmed with uh, expectancy for these broadcasts that we're beginning because we are uh, beginning a new series today, and we've entitled this Working God's Word. And I'm so excited about uh, what we have available for you, the teaching, the, the, the content, the subject matter. It's, it's in truth what changed my life and what revolutionized my family. And uh, we are also uh, going to make available to you uh, from this series uh, a uh, eight-part package, uh, eight CDs, eight DVDs. Uh, we have flash drives available and a study guide uh, that uh, will be all the content of this series that we're going to go through. Uh, you can uh, you can use the outlines, you can use the study guides, the book in small group settings. It will be a tremendous help to your faith building library. I do believe. And uh, our book offer this uh, month is my book, First Words Matter, Last Words Stand. And uh, uh, it's about your words. Uh, it's about how the first response that you have to a circumstance is how that situation is going to go. Your first response is what uh, steers the ship uh, in that direction. And so I believe it will be a tremendous help to you. Uh, we are also offering for our partner uh, gift this month uh, my wife's uh, first book that she wrote many years ago entitled Pressure No Problem. Uh, if you have not yet become a partner, I would like to encourage you to do so and become a part of our faith building family. Uh, a partner is one that just simply supports this ministry uh, each month uh, with your giving, your gifts of love to help us build faith uh, throughout the nation uh, and uh, in other avenues. And so we would greatly appreciate if you would like to be a partner and join with us in building faith and framing worlds by the Word of God. When you do, uh, you can uh, receive my wife's book, Pressure No Problem. Now, all of the information for both of these offers, if you want to order the Working God's Word package, the information is there on the screen. If you would like to become a partner, that information is available as well. Uh, we're going to get right into the Word of God, and we're going to be dealing with in this segment on believing God. You know, believing God is not hard. It's not difficult. Faith is not difficult. Faith is not hard. Uh, it seems hard because it's different. And the reason it's different is because most people that you know and that I know have spent a large part of their life learning how to thrive in the mental arena, learning how to thrive in the solical uh, realm. And as believers, we need to develop ourselves in believing with our heart, all right? When you begin to develop yourself in believing with your heart, then the things of faith, the things of the Word of God, they don't seem so hard, all right? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23 in the New King James Bible, it says this, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice what he says, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. Now, this order is in the Word of God this way, I believe, for a specific reason. The Holy Spirit authored the Word of God. All right, Scripture says in uh, uh, 1 Timothy, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. All right, so all Scripture is God-breathed. All Scripture is inspired by God. And it's in this order by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And Paul said your whole spirit, 
soul, and body. So I have to consistently remind myself, one of the greatest things that you can consistently remind yourself of is this, that you are a spirit. All right? I am a spirit. You should say that right there where you're sitting. I am a spirit. All right? I have a soul and I live in this body. I am a spirit. I possess a soul and I live in a body. All right? Now, I have to place my born again human spirit, which is filled with the Holy Spirit, in a position or in the position of control. All right? When I begin to live out of my spirit, I place it in a position of control. All right? Your body is the poorest master you could ever have because it is totally moved uh, by what is felt and what is seen and the passions that the flesh possesses. Your mental arena, your solical realm is a poor master because it's moved by reason. It's moved by uh, situation. It's moved by circumstance. All right, it's moved by feeling. Uh, the real you, your spirit, your born again spirit, is not moved by any of those areas. All right, if you allow your body to have the ascendancy, it can overwhelm your spirit. If you allow your soul to have the ascendancy, it can overwhelm your spirit. All of those are to be brought into the control of the Spirit and into the control of the Word of God. So I have to place my Spirit in the position of control. Now, we can connect our mouth, which speaks, and our will that chooses and our emotions that feel and our mind that thinks under the authority of our spirit which believes. Notice that the Bible says in Romans 10, it says with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Notice that the Bible never says that you believe with your mind or that you believe with your body. When, you, when a believer makes the statement, I believe. They are saying that out of my spirit, I believe. This, this is important because if you're trying to believe with your mind or trying to believe with your flesh, you're never going to do it. You have to believe out of your spirit, all right? Uh, 3 John 2 in the New King James Bible says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Well, the soul consists of the mind, the will, and the emotions. All right, the mind, the will, the emotions. Our progress in life is accelerated by our soul prospering in the Word. You, 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 you will see people that it seems like they're not prospering. They're not, there's no acceleration. There's no advancement in their life. And more, more often than not, that person is attempting to function in life and in circumstances out of their mind, out of their flesh, and you'll never see any acceleration. You'll never see any advancement, all right? There's no real success in the world, in the life of any person outside of the Word of God. There's no real success that's found there, all right? That's when you look at the world, their idea of success and the believer's idea of success are polar opposites, all right? In uh, the, the, the body feeds on physical food and produces a force called strength. 
The mind feeds on intellectual food, information, and produces knowledge. The will, your will, exercises choices. That's what we call willpower. All right? But willpower is not out of your spirit. Willpower is out of your out of the natural side. The emotions feed on relationships and produces feelings. The spirit feeds on the word of God and produces power. Produces power to believe. All right? We, we quoted Romans 10.10 10 that says, with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So throughout the word of God, the heart is used interchangeably with the spirit. The heart is the spirit. The believing in our heart determines destiny. All right, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you just determined your eternal destiny and you determined your temporal destiny. Whatever your destiny was before you were born again, before you believed the word of God, when you became born again, that has the potential to change drastically dependent upon the level of word that you ingest and begin to work out in your life. Because the word of God releases something. It releases resurrection power when we believe it. When you, re when you believe the word of God, it releases the resurrection power of God. So just knowing the information in the word, knowing the information isn't a release of faith. All right, that's why you'll speak with people and they'll talk about how they know the word and, and they can quote the word and they've memorized the word. Just knowing the word is not a release of faith because faith requires something. Faith requires believing. All right, faith requires a believing that the word is true. Do I just know it or do I believe it? There's, there's something, there's a statement uh, that I've heard my wife make, and it's this, Christians know, but believers believe. All right, Christians know, but believers believe. See, there's a difference between knowing and believing. I can know someone in that I have met them but that doesn't mean I believe them. Because just knowing doesn't mean I have faith in that person. I have to come to know them on another level. I have to come to believe them on another level. Knowing does not mean a release of faith. Do I just know it or do I believe it? Christians know, but believers Believe. The Amplified Bible says, For with the heart a person believes, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on Christ, and is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God, and with the mouth he confesses, declares openly, speaks out freely his faith, and confirms his salvation. All right? Notice that. He adheres to, he trusts in, he relies on Christ and he speaks out freely his faith and confirms his salvation. The Woost Bible says, with the heart, faith is exercised, which results in righteousness. All right? So when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you spoke it out of your mouth. You spoke out of your mouth what you believed in your heart, and what was the result? You became righteous, all right? Because you said what you believe. R believing power is produced when you place the raw material of God's word in your heart. 
When, when I take the raw material of God's word, all right, whatever it may be, in this context, salvation. Okay, Lord, I see in Romans 10, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that I am born again, I will be saved, all right? And I take that and I place it in my heart. And then I confess what I believe, all right? Well, the result of that was I was saved. I was made righteous. See, that believing power is produced when I put the raw material of God's word in my heart. See, believing should never be a strain, all right? It should never be a leap. Now, don't misunderstand me. There, uh, for anything to grow, pressure has to be put on it, all right? Uh, meaning this, that for your faith to grow, you have to put pressure on your faith. But it's not a strain or a leap, all right? A, a huge leap or a huge strain. It's something that you're consistently doing. You're consistently putting the word of God in your, in your heart, consistently speaking it out of your mouth, and, and things are beginning to change, all right? So it's not a, a strain or a leap. I believe God, I'm believing, bless God, I'm believing, I'm believing, all right? You're putting your pressure on, the, on your faith but it's not a strain or a leap. Notice, Romans 4, 3 says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. What did he do? He believed what God said, and God put that down to his account as righteousness. The Weiss Bible says, uh, concerning that, it was put to his account, resulting in righteousness. The Amplified Bible says, Abraham believed in, trusted in God, and it was credited to his account as righteousness, right living and right standing with God. Amen. We have a covenant with Almighty God, a covenant that God initiated, a covenant that God instituted. And faith is the currency stored in the account. All right, I have a covenant with God. Faith is the currency stored in the account. And the spiritual currency of faith is exchanged into righteousness. Faith is the transaction point. Faith is the transaction point. You know, uh, here recently, I needed some new suits. And so, uh, actually, new sports coats. And so, I went to uh, the uh, department store where I like to uh, buy my suits and uh, uh, I went up and, and told the, the man what I was looking for, and he told me, and, and I was looking at the different uh, options that were available, and, uh, you know, I found a couple that I wanted, and, and uh, so I picked them out and took them up to uh, uh, the gentleman that had been helping me, and, uh, you know, of course, you know the process. He uh, scanned the items and, and uh, told me the amount, and I gave him my card, and the transaction was made. When I think about this, I went in, I said what I wanted. Now, understand this. Why would I go in and just tell the man what I wanted? Because I am carrying a card that money is stored on that will pay for what I'm asking for. All right? Because I know that there's gonna come a transaction time. And so I have got to store the money in the account because I know there's gonna be a transaction. Every time you are putting the word of God in your heart, you're storing up the word which is producing faith that's gonna be available for the next transaction you need. And so when I took the coach to the man and he told me the price, I gave him my card, he swiped the card, the transaction was made, and I left with the garments. You store the word of God up in your heart, 
It produces faith for the transaction that you need. When the issue arises, when the circumstance comes up, when the, when the time comes for you to expend your faith, it's there, it's in your account, it's available, the circumstance comes up, you open your mouth, you declare your faith, you say what you believe, the transaction's complete. If it's there in your heart and it comes out of your mouth, all right, your faith is operative. Glory be to God. In John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, notice, though he were dead, yet shall he live. If you believe in me, Jesus is saying, you're connected to the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, you're connected to healing. If you believe in me, you're connected to victory. If you believe in me, you're connected to overcoming power, world overcoming power. If believing is the connection, then unbelief is the disconnection. All right? If, if he said, if you believe, your brother will live again. All right, you got to believe. Do you believe your brother will live again? I am the resurrection and the life. In John 6, 28 through 29, it says, they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Notice what Jesus said. He said, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So watch the work of the believer. Believe. You are a believer. Your job is believe. The work of the believer is believe. This is the spiritual action. This is the work that has a spiritual reward or a paycheck. All right, the work of the believer is to believe. Notice, in the Woos Bible, it says, then they said to him, what are we to do as a habit of life in order that we might continually be working the works of God? Answered Jesus and said to them, this is the work of God, that you continually be believing on him that, the, that one sent off on a mission. So notice, this gives it another aspect. The work of the believer is to continually be believing on him, continually be believing in the word of God. That's your job, is to continually be believing. All right? This, this, this is so important where not just success in your life, but success with the things of God are concerned. I've got to consistently be believing. Every day is a faith day. Every day you're applying the word of God to the circumstance, to the situations of your life, all right? And every day you're storing up the word of God in your heart so that when the transaction is needed, you have the funds, you have the spiritual currency there available to make the transaction. I've, uh, I've seen over the years, and I don't have a lot of time to get into this, but I've seen over the years where people will wait until there's a circumstance or a situation and then try to work their faith and then try to work the word of God. And uh, I will say this, that just, Percentage-wise, the percentage of people that I've seen that are successful in that is small compared to the person that consistently places the word in their heart and consistently works the word, all right? You don't want to wait to try to put the word in your heart and believe the word of God and work the word under the pressure of a circumstance all right, that has a, a hard ending, if you will. 
Work the word of God right now. Put it in your heart right now and believe God. And when the transaction time comes, you'll have the victory in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm so glad that you joined us today. And uh, I hope that you'll uh, order the package that we have available for you. You'll see the information here at the end of the broadcast. But we're looking forward to our next time together as we get back into this subject of working God's Word. I believe, I really do, that it'll be a game changer in your life. So be blessed. And until I see you again next time, remember to build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God. God bless you. The Word of God is forever settled in heaven. It will not return to God without accomplishing His will. The Lord wants us to have the same results with His Word that He experiences with His Word. Every believer needs to learn how to work the Word of God. This series, Working God's Word, is exactly what you need to help you learn how to activate the Word of God in your life. In this series, Pastors Philip and Michelle still explain how the Word of God works in the heart, how faith in the heart functions like spiritual currency, how God's Word works like seed in the ground, how to activate the Word by speaking it, and much more. This valuable eight-part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. In addition, we are offering Pastor Philip Steele's companion book, First Words Matter, Last Words Stand. In this book, Pastor Steele teaches the importance of the words we speak to the everyday outcome of our lives. The words we speak can direct the course of our lives like a rudder steers the direction of a ship or the bit in the mouth of a horse directs the path of a horse. If you want to activate the Word of God in your life, this book is for you. This essential book that teaches you how to speak in line with the will of God can be yours for just $8. Don't miss this special offer. The eight-part series, Working God's Word, and the companion book, First Words Matter, Last Words Stand, work together to help you operate the Word of God. Call the number on your screen now or go to buildfaith.net to order. Call or go online now. We want to say thank you for watching Faith Builders and would like to invite you to become a partner with this ministry. With your partnership, you help make it possible for the Word of God to be spread across the world. You can call us at 1-586-5080 or visit us online at buildfaith.net. You can also write us at P.O. Box 242-692, Little Rock, Arkansas 72223. Together, we are building people's faith and framing their world by the Word of God.